Einen wunderschönen guten Abend und hallo zu einer neuen Episode von Journey to the Chateau. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à Journey to the Chateau de Cologne. Hello to the Irish speaking friends from around the world. Welcome to another episode of Journey to the Chateau. Well, we're talking about what? We are talking about uh, all of our chateau harvests for this season, including ones that are still going on. Yeah. <laughs> the, the victory that keeps on getting. <laughs> wow, he needs some figs. <laughs> right? Well, it's. Uh, so, I mean, this, this used to be a, a working uh, f uh, farm, a farm. And so we have. We have had multiple fruit harvests, and yes, the figs are still going on. I think we already harvested about 50 kilos of figs. Kilos, that's about, oh good, I should have done that on the calculator. Uh, 50 by 2.2, that's 122 pounds, I think. I don't know. Uh, if it's wrong, please don't tell me. I don't right. need to know that I'm inefficient in, 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 in uh, math in my head now. But, so, um, so this episode is about all the things that we've done with all of our harvests at the Chateau. Let's preserve something.
So we had, uh, we made elderberry juice, which is very beneficial when you have a right. cold. Right, that was the, that was using the, the juicer. Yes. That we had picked up and, uh, at, at, a, at an MIUS that we showed in an earlier episode. And I swear to you, there was a woman who, uh, after I found it, she would have, she wanted to punch me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was swearing. Yeah. yeah. It would, so, and it worked great. And yeah. now, mind you, I have not uh, done any juicing uh, in good grief, 40 years. So, last time I saw this actually done was at my grandmother's kitchen. And so, I knew at the end you take the, the fruit that is popped by the steam out and squeeze it in a linen or cotton cloth right. and squeeze out the living daylight out of it. And you have to wait a little bit because it can be. Extremely hot, <laughs> right? So be a bit careful, right? And I mean, really, I, uh, my hands were so purple, right? And that, that was also you did the same thing with the uh, the blackberry brambles as well. Yes, the, the brambles. Uh, it's the same thing. Normally, you would use what they call a flutter lutter. So it's a very fine sieve that you uh, has a mechanism on top that right, which you started using initially when you did this one. Yes, but then you had to kind of switch. Now, th that was because it, normally that works great, mm -hmm. but this year, because of the drought we had, well, actually, we were not in a drought area. Not in our area. It no. was still very dry. <laughs> uh, so the food were not plump. Uh, normally, they, they're much more plump, and when they're, the, the, the plumper they are, the, the easier they, they just pop. This was not the case. So, again, we just squished and squeezed and right. got all the juice out of it. So, uh, out of, I think, ah. Uh, three three kilos or so of uh fruit we only yeah. got about four jars of blackberry yeah, that's a je jelly that's an awful lot of work <laughs> for such a little amount compared to it everything else good, though. compared to everything else that we did you know the the peaches and you know the figs and everything it was it was like yes. so you spent so much time you know getting injured going into the brambles to get the blackberries, and then you get so little out of it. Now, I have to say, in all fairness to the brambles, making slow gin, I mean, picking slow berries, which is from the blackthorn, the fruit of right. the blackthorn, uh, and the name says it, blackthorn. Right, right. Uh, our blackthorn, we had plenty of fruit around our property, and when I went there to pick it, I think we got a, a, what did I get, 500 gram, half a kilo. Right. A, a good pound. Right. And that was very frustrating. Now, since we had gone uh, to another town the week prior, uh, there was a, a whole hedge, or a thicket, I should say, on the left side where we drove by. And of course, I should pay attention to the road, but I saw all those <laughs> slow berries. Yep. And I said, so you know what? I'm just going to go and pick. And it took me about an hour, and I had about three kilos more. Right. And the recipe for slow gin is uh, half a kilo of slow berries to one uh, liter of gin. So we're still... And there's sugar in there too, right? Yes, there's yeah. then uh, a half a kilo of <coughs> sugar in each. And uh, so we so, have four liters right now. Right, I was going to say, we went from have, we're possibly only having one jar of slow gin to now we have... Well, more, maybe seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> But it, I mean, so we have four ripening for this Christmas, and then we figured once we filter them and do everything, we do the next batch. Right. Because they're in the freezer. Right. Uh, Slowberries need frost, but our frost usually here in the region where we are in France does not start till January. And no. And if we would have waited for the frost, the, the critters would have eaten everything by then. So it didn't make any sense. And who can win them? I mean, <laughs> right. if they imagine they're in a bar and they eat like those little berries, uh, Sure. Uh, they would love it. Now, there is um, a, a fun story about slow berries after you marinate them in gin. And you don't discard them, uh, so you keep them in the freezer. And you take the little berries and you dump them, for example, in uh, bitter chocolate or milk chocolate. And um, a friend of Princess Margaret, uh, Llewellyn, uh, said that those are these delicious little suckers and they are really good so they are then soaked in gin covered in chocolate how bad can that be i don't know are we doing that oh, we are doing this. okay we're gonna do that you will you will hear about it <laughs> 
So one of the uh, the things that we had in the most abundance this mm -hmm. year would be our figs. It's the tree that keeps on, keeps on giving. Right. And so uh, we decided that there were going to be, we weren't going to do just one thing with the figs. Right? No. So we had to come up with multiple things that you could do with figs. So we did actually do multiple things. Yes. Some that we have never done before. And one that we will do now yes. that we didn't even think about. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> and what is that? <laughs> That's going to be whole figs. Yep. With little teeny tiny holes, well, punched or poked into them, and they will be marinated in vodka. Right. So similar to what we do with the slow berries, that we found that you could do that with the figs as well. Uh, how bad can that be? I'm willing to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. Uh, so far, I uh, did two different uh, versions of fig marmalade. Right. Um. And we've already given plenty of jars away of, of the marmalade. And we did two different versions of chutney. So the right. last one, I picked figs. I think it was out there for 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. Right. And I came in and, and you've seen this, the, the big basket that we have. Um, and it was completely full. Right. So it was about 14 or 15 kilos of, after they were cleaned. Our fig, so our big marmalade copper pot was absolutely full. Yeah. With well, you know, with with chutney, it's the so it's the fruits. It is onions, garlic, uh, vinegar. It's sugar. It's spices. Right. Raisins. Right. Uh, what, yeah, it's it's amazing, which I couldn't find here. Um, so we're not in Paris. It's a bit of a difference. Uh, there are, you know, cranberries you can put in the apricots. I mean, you can put add any kind of fruit in it. And it, there, there are people who say, oh, you know, just cook it for 10 minutes. No, you can't. A chutney needs to cook for a long time. And after you put it in jars and then you put it in a hot water bath. So it, it heats really well and all the air that's, you know, pushes out of the little jar. And then when it cools, it has a vacuum. So if you have a preserve, mm -hmm. um, so it needs to sit for about six weeks to mellow, and the longer it, well, the, I don't know, for about a year, it just is really delicious. Now, Sir and I couldn't quite wait. No. We had, <laughs> you know, as you do, as m many people will know if you've ever done preserves before, that you always end up with uh, the last jar being something that's not quite a complete jar. Yes, nine out of ten times at least. Right. It's, yes. And that's... Uh, had to try this. That's right. <laughs> So we actually have a, a video of Patrick making the fig chutney. Okay, have a look. Uh, so I just picked 2,500 grams or two and a half kilos of um, figs. They just keep ripening and it's great. Uh, behind me, my dad is peeling and cutting onions up. I just did uh, garlic because we're making fig chutney. It sounds delicious, I think. Uh, I have a whole bunch. These are the figs. They are now washed. Uh, the stems are off. And I'm cutting those into little pieces. And um, then we'll continue <laughs> with the videos. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'm back. So, this is not all the onions. And since it's two and a half kilos, of figs, uh, it's a, a one complete kilo of onions. It is six cloves of garlic. Uh, it, uh, we have in here 500, uh, 475 grams of raisins, golden and uh, dark ones. And what I'm doing in addition to this now, is it's like start, starting to cook down a bit. So we have space for, <laughs> for the rest of the onions. Uh, amazing what, what you get together. What I'm gonna do is I crushed fresh pepper, cardamom, um, and cloves. Uh, and I, cloves are very, very, very intense. 
But on the other hand, it's an Indian dish. It's, there's nothing subtle about a good chutney. I also have fresh cardamom seeds that I'm crushing and then I take them, the, the seeds, when the seeds are out, I take the skins out because I don't want them to cook with it. I am crushing all of this, so fresh. And then I will toast it in a copper pan. Uh, doesn't have to be a copper pan, can be any kind of uh, pan with a, a thick bottom. Uh, so that uh, you have to be very careful, very attentive, because if it's not supervised, it's really quick that uh, they burn, and you don't want to have burned spices. I'm going to take the skins out from the uh, seed pods of the cardamom. And my parents are here in the kitchen with me. Hello. 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 Mom said she's here to taste everything. Carefully toast this. And my father has finished the one kilos of onions. It feels like there's nothing that's done in small batches in, in this chateau. And which is kind of nice because that's the way I like to cook, which of course comes from my father. So I, I'm kind of, uh, I can't help it. So, uh, uh, in addition to the cider vinegar, uh, it's, I have uh, a little bit of raspberry vinegar in here too, because since it's a chutney, you want the fruitiness. And this will cook down quite substantially. Um, I'm going to get the garlic from the bottom of the pan. And once it's done in about hmm, hour to hour and a half, it's going to be a lovely paste uh, that can you can eat this with uh, cheeses, meats, and or just put it on a nice slice of baguette and enjoy it with a glass of wine as an appetizer. So in a moment, this will go into um, ah, I always want to say time warp. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I'm going to put it in the fast track and um, with the spices, when you toast them, you don't want to roast them, you toast them. There is quite a difference. Uh, you will, they start to um, smell incredibly intense. It's wonderful. Uh, so in, uh, there is, will also be allspice and cinnamon in here in addition to this. But um, those are not spices I toast. So peppercorn, there are five different peppers in here. Cardamom, um, that's all done uh, in, in the pan here, and uh, that's good. And I will grate uh, a nice chunk of ginger root that will also go in here and cook for about an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, so cinnamon, allspice, cloves, garlic, uh, cardamom, um, peppercorn. Now I've put in um, some sugar, cane sugar, I don't, uh, a lot of people prefer it with brown sugar, um, which I couldn't get. So that's why I've used cane sugar and I still need more sugar uh, in it because this was only uh, 500 gram. Uh, so it needs a bit more. Uh, there is, uh, it's, it's, it smells absolutely divine and the interesting part is in the 
the kitchen is very large and in the behind part of the kitchen it tastes it smells even more intense um so with the sugar it will now cook between 20 to 50 minutes be, be, and then you see that it's really thick and uh the recipes that you find online are are talking about uh 500 grams so you have this in a large pot with a thick bottom and you just go through it and it will um when you for a moment see the bottom of the pot that clearly will not happen here so it's once it's thick and i prefer a chutney rather thick than too runny so i will cook this for maybe a good hour even and until it's really really nice and thick so we're going back into time lapse I'm now at the stage of filling the jars. This has cooked for about, well, almost two hours. Um, my parents, Stuart and I, we had dinner, so we just let it simmer on low. And now it looks amazing. It smells fantastic. So the jars are all sterilized. And this is, of course, very, very thick. So this is not as easy to fill and I don't have the funnel that is recommended. But I'll make do, I, I promise. We have been asked many times now by multiple people, why are you not showing us what you're doing in the chateau? Well, there is not really, well, there is a lot happening, but not what you, you would kind of uh, see as renovations because we have to wait. Right. With certain things where we can actually start to really renovate uh, until uh, John, our incredible electrician, is done with cutting into walls and we can actually plaster over right. everything that's inside the walls, right. which is the regulation or in, in English or you know, United States, the code. Right. Uh, we can't have electrical lines exposed and we're getting, I mean, the, the hallway, the entrance hall had no electricity in it. In no it outlets, had, no. Uh, I mean, it had light switches, but that was no it. No outlets, right. And everything was and above the, the right, plaster. And, right, and everything, right. The the light fixtures and everything, the, the, the electrical cords are running actually outside uh, and all along the ceiling. I mean, you could see the electrical cords going across to the lights. I'm so, looking at one right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of thing that we're working with John, or John is doing for us, that he's... Yes. You know, working on the best ways to bury those things into, you know, the plaster, the ceiling, uh, parts of the floor that have to be lifted up in order to do things, you know, for the other levels of the chateau. So, you know, until those things are worked out and hooked back up so they work, we can't uh, plaster over walls and close things up. Or paint. Or, right, or do anything until that's done because the renovations rely on the fact that those are all going to be working electrics. Yes. Because we would not want to paint and paper over an electrical cord that doesn't work. Right. So. And, and or, you know, just paint, plaster and sand and plaster again and sand right. again a wall. And then it's finished and you uh, put the, the undercoat on, I mean, the right. primer on and a suit cushion. Then you paint and then John said, this is the wall I need to cut up open up. Right. So... We're trying to do this in a smart way, right. not a fast way. So, right. and John, John is doing a, a really good job because he's he's actually uh, working on the on the whole chateau as a whole. Yes. So you saw in uh, uh, one of the previous episodes, you saw him in, at the main power where it was coming in, and so what he's needing to do because we have uh, in the the carriage house is where we're going to have a workshop. So. We had no electricity that was working. Uh, there had been electricity in the past, 
and it was old and nothing was working in there at all. It sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and so, I mean, that's, that is very important that we do that. So in order to have the electricity all the way over to the carriage house, He's, that's also being incorporated into everything that he's doing throughout the whole chateau to get all the main power all the way through. Yes. So we have it in all of the outbuildings. And so everything is safe and usable for us yes. to do things like I can actually set up the workshop and we can set up finally do some table uh, saws and things <laughs> which we cannot currently do. And we, 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 we kind of it tickles us too, but. So for the people who say, well, why are you not doing more in the chateau? It's, things are happening. They, they, but they're happening in a controlled, planned, and smart way. There is no, for us, no reason to do things haphazardly and fast. Right. The, to then have to redo them again. So that is the reason why we're doing things in a very particular order. Right. Um, but it's not that things are not progressing. Things are actually very much progressing. Right. Just not the stuff we can actually film because it would be so... It's like wallpaper paste dry. Right. And, and we know we really... We don't want to spend our days chasing John around the chateau as he crawls through spaces in the attic that we don't even want to go into, really. So... Uh, that it's just not worth filming for us. So no, it's. I mean, he, and and it, it's. It, it kind of would be an insult. No, but really, it, so we are progressing. Um, right. And sometimes, when I, for example, I think about uh, Chateau de la Lande and Stephanie, I think, ah, oh, she has all this done, but she owns the chateau for seventeen years. Right. And we're here for five months. So right. I just need to sometimes smack myself in the head and say, hey, just. Cut it out. And so we are progressing and certain things, we are window shopping for certain things. Right. Uh, so to plan, we have our little, you know, board where we just go, okay, so we have a printout of possible tiles right. and appliances. And um, I think we picked our kitchen, but that's subject for a future vlog. Right. Because uh, we don't know yet. But it, it's, I mean, we're, we're getting there and there will be quite a lot of progress within the next four to five months. Right. So, having said that. Uh, one other thing we can mention yes. is that uh, we did get a, a, a delivery. That oh, it was a big package. I mean, right. It was. Yes. And, uh, and we'll show you a little bit of that as we're talking. Uh, and it was uh, an, another toile that we got uh, for upstairs bedroom, that for curtains for our bedroom, yes, yes and for uh, what we are going to be using for the bed crown, the cielderly, yes, correct. And uh, uh, I was really surprised. It is a, it's beautiful. It is sort of the same past pastoral, right? yes, yes, but in a much smaller print, and it's quite beautiful. Uh, the print for this tall. Yes, and the curtains I'm going to sew are going to be lined because the difference right. between the curtains in the farmhouse, which is actually this way, that's why I'm instinctively that pointing that right. way. Um, in the farmhouse, there are the shutters. So right. uh, whenever there's no one in staying at the farmhouse, the shutters are closed. Close, so there right. is no UV light. But above right. us, there are no shutters. So. All the curtains above there and in here in the chateau, once we are starting to sew with silk, they're all going to be lined. Right. So it's because so many comments that you should line your, yes, we know that, know. but not when there are, cur when there are shutters pr protecting, uh, now there is one thing, one lady said, well, if you line them, you don't have light shining through them and you see the 12 better. That's true. However, so the, that's in the bedrooms, and most people do not spend the day in the bedroom. They spend the evening there, and right. then you don't have the light from the back. So, but it's a, it's a well taken point, and the next set of curtains, which are going to be six curtains, and uh, the curtain for the ciel de lis, which will be there, uh, that's all going to be lined. Right. So that's exciting. It is. On that note. 
I think that's it. Yes. Yes. So we will see you next time. Au revoir. Merci. Bonne journée. And auf Wiedersehen. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.